Hi everyone and welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In today's video we're going to be discussing how we can detect radiation. So we're going to review what the different types of radiation that we encounter are. Um, we're going to then have a look at some of the different techniques, so photographic film, the Geiger counter, scintillation counter um, and the cloud chamber as four ways that, um, that we as scientists can detect the presence of and behaviour of different radioactive um, particles and, um, and rays that are given off. Okay, so when we are thinking, we're, we're thinking about three main types of um, radiation in this situation. There, there are more that we've, we've talked about more recently, but these are the three main ones. So alpha particles, which have a relative charge of plus two, which is essentially a helium nucleus, and that have a low penetrating power. Um, we talked about a beta particle, which is essentially an electron that comes originates from the nucleus, so it has the same relative mass of an electron and a neg single negative charge um, with a moderate penetrating power. And then we talk about gamma rays, which are um, electromagnetic um, waves rather than particles, as in as alpha and beta are. So they have no relative charge or relative mass, um, but they have a very high penetrating power. Okay, so each of these types of radiation is given out by different isotopes in different kind of amounts um, under different circumstances. Okay, so we looked in the previous video about what circumstances an isotope would, uh, which, which type of radiation would be given off under particular circumstances, whether it's to do with the proton-neutron ratio or the sheer atomic size. Okay, but so the four kind of techniques we're going to discuss here are different um, qualitative or quantitative ways to detect different types of radiation. The first one is one that um, would be really commonly used by someone who is working in an environment um, where background radiation or, you know, like a radiation is, is a exposure is a normal part of their their occupational environment. Okay, so someone who works at an, in a nuclear reactor or who works in handling uh, radioactive materials and transporting to and from hospitals or works with um, patients in um, you know radiotherapy ward at, at a hospital, okay, so that it, they have a, what's called a radiation um, badge, something that they would be attached or pinned to their clothing um, that basically goes where they go, okay. So it's got some photographic film encased in um, in plastic. Now you might remember from when we first started talking about radioactivity that photographic film was with the way that they first um, identified this this radioactivity in the first place, okay, that it it darkens. Um, when it's exposed to different types of radiation. Now, this is not very specific to one type of radiation or not. It's not, you know, only picking up alpha or only picking up gamma or whatever, um, but just identifying um, the exposure to that energy. Um, and so it gradually darkens over time, and that once it reaches a certain level, that it indicates that the safe limit has been um, safe limit has been reached. Okay, so once it kind of discolors to a certain point or that it kind of gives off a certain signal that it says that, nope, that's that's it, you need to stop now. Okay, because then that shows that, because you, you can't smell or feel or hear the radiation interacting with your body and so you need it as a way to indicate when it's you need to stop and remove yourself from the area. Um, and once it's done, it's done. Okay, another technique that is really useful, which is kind of your, your stereotypical thing that you might have seen in movies or seen in TV shows when they're looking at things to do with radiation. It's called a Geiger counter. Okay, we have one here at school, um, and you may have, have seen and experienced them before. Um, but so the idea is that we have, and so it looks, you know, this is kind of one example of a Geiger counter, but not, not the only one. We have a radioactive sample that's giving off ionizing radiation. And so, and so, what happens is that that ionizing radiation passes into a little, um, a little kind of detector. You know, it's this kind of this little cylinder that you see down in the photo here, and then it's kind of blown up um, in this image here. What it does is that radiation passes into this tube, which contains argon gas, and that where it interacts with a particle of argon, that it causes that to become ionized. Okay, and then that ionized gas particle, or argon particle is then, then we kind of get this, this interaction that's happening inside there that causes an electrical signal to be registered within, um, you know, so thinking about where it interacts with the electrodes. What that does is that then it's connected up to a device that counts it. And so it records, you know, that that interaction, that, that thing, but it also gives a very characteristic click. Um, it's an, you know, it gives an auditory 
um, signal as well as actually counting it in terms of how many um, how much you know how many interactions there have been so you know so it's that classic kind of sound in the movie that click 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 click, click kind of sound um, so that ionization of argon gas causes the electrical signal which is then amplified and recorded okay so the more clicks you hear the more radiation um, is being detected okay and so the fact that you can hear the sound is also a really good indication but you can also look at um, the rate of counts um, as a way to, to measure radioactivity Okay, now we have a, a similar kind of technology, but rather than looking at um, the ionization of gas, that it's uh, causing what's called a scintillation, or which is the release of photons of light. Okay, so the radiation traveling into the scintillation kind of the detector, that there's certain, this certain material which, which scintillates or gives off a little burst of light when that interaction happens. That light is given off and then it's detected on a photosensitive surface, so a surface that is sensitive to light, and that then you know registers kind of a signal and that signal becomes multiplied or it kind of it um, you know kind of gets redirected and multiplied and that then it registers that as an electrical signal in this photo so this is like this photo multiplier tube where it takes that little bit of um, information and then it actually amplifies it out. Okay, so a similar sort of idea to the Geiger counter, but it's just working with a slightly different um, mechanism. Okay, and then we come to the last of our four that we're going to focus on today called a cloud chamber. <clears throat> Visually, by far the most, um, really most interesting to see. Um, and if you ever get the chance to see one in real life, it's fantastic. We don't have the, the capability to do it here at school at, at this stage because you need access to dry ice, which is not easy to come by. Um, but so what happens, you have this, this kind of this chamber that's sort of set up that contains um, vapour of alcohol. Um, and so what happens is that you have dry ice at the bottom that cools the, the so you get this vapour of alcohol that forms in here and then you cool it until it's basically the maximum kind of vapour that's going to exist inside that. Um, so you've got heaps of cold alcohol vapour in here. You've got a radioactive source or a, a, a way of radiation um, to travel in. And what it does is that ionises the vapour um, that it interacts with. So it causes it to become ionised and then that causes them to attract together or stick together and condense. And so um, that you get this kind of visible track of condensation that forms through that vapour. Okay, and because it's really cold, that you can see it really clearly, it doesn't dissipate, you know, so it's not like, okay, well, it just passes through and then it's gone, but actually kind of you get this visual record of where that particle had travelled. And there's a really, there's some really interesting things that you, you might be able to come by, um, or like some, some videos on YouTube and things that show the path of particular particles through this kind of environment, because alpha and beta and then the gamma rays that are given off interact with the vapour in a slightly different way. And so what that that, you know that produces visually some really interesting looking effects okay so it's not quantitative as such um, like some of the other techniques are but it's certainly much more visual okay so we've identified or you know reminded ourselves of alpha beta and gamma radiation as particles and waves and how they they behave and then the four different techniques that we can use to detect this radiation the photographic film in the form of a radiation badge the geiger counter scintillation counter and the cloud chamber all right thanks very much for watching bye for now